science fiction. What do we think about when we think about science fiction? Space, probably. Going to Mars, or even interstellar. What about fusion energy? Fusion is quite popular in science fiction, too. It's the, the power source of the DeLorean time machine in Back to the Future. It's the crazy fusion power experiment run by Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man. Once, going to the moon was science fiction. Once, the idea of humans living in a space station 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth was science fiction. Now, it is fact. In the last decade or two, private investment has transformed the space industry. Billionaire investors are pushing alternative approaches into reusable rockets to reduce the cost of access to space. And small tech startups are building and launching small satellites. Their ideas and investments are re-energizing the space industry and delivering huge benefits to society. And what about fusion? It's the dream energy source. Clean, green, safe, and abundant. But it's a pipe dream, some say. Always 30 years away. Impossible. To my mind, fusion is no different from some of those other famously ambitious challenges. The space race, commercializing flight, climbing Mount Everest. And I see no reason why, like these other challenges, we shouldn't achieve fusion. I'm a physicist, and I work for fusion energy startup Tokamak Energy. I got into this field because of climate change. In 2003, when I was just out of university as a new physics graduate, I read about fusion for the first time. It's the reaction that powers the sun and the stars. Since scientists figured out how the sun was shining, they've been dreaming of harnessing the reaction to make an energy source here on Earth. It would produce no greenhouse gases, no long-lived radioactive waste, and it would produce huge amounts of energy with almost inexhaustible fuel. I thought, if we could do this, it would be incredible. It's the climate change solution we need. The one hitch is that in order to make fusion reactions happen, we need temperatures of hundreds of millions of degrees. I found out about JET, a tokamak in Oxfordshire. It's about an hour away from where I grew up. How had I never heard about this before, I thought. At JET, they've actually achieved fusion. They had made real fusion reactions. They just needed to get more energy out of the reaction than they put in. A new, larger machine, ITER, an international collaboration, was planned. In between gap year travels, I visited JET, and I spoke to scientists at Imperial College London and Oxford. I became convinced that fusion is the best chance we have to minimize the effects of climate change to rapidly decrease our greenhouse gas emissions while maintaining the quality of life that abundant energy gives us. I started a PhD in fusion energy in 2005, working at the laboratory where JET is located and going back and forth to Imperial College. Fusion, they said, was 30 years away. ITER would be built and operating in 10 to 15 years. After that, would come a demonstration power plant. Then, commercial fusion would follow soon after. I set to work, eager to make some kind of contribution. Towards the end of my PhD, about three years later, the ITER team had got through the political wrangling of where the machine would be located. They'd signed an agreement to proceed and cleared some land in France. But timescales were slipping. I realized with dismay that fusion was not 27 years away. If anything, it was more than 30 years away now. Fast forward 10 years. ITER is under construction, estimated to start operating in 2025 
almost a decade behind schedule. But we have new developments now as well. Firstly, new technologies. And secondly, private fusion companies. Remember how private fusion transformed the space industry? Well, perhaps now is the time that private investment will transform the energy industry. In recent decades, or in the last decade, the number of fusion startups has increased. These are private companies working to develop and commercialize fusion. As well as Tokamak Energy, there are several startups now in the UK and North America, all working on slightly different ideas for how to create a star on Earth. Because that's what we're doing in fusion. And it's hard because you can't just put a star in a box. You need to find some way of keeping it trapped, of keeping the fuel hot enough for long enough for fusion reactions to occur. So it's quite an engineering challenge. At Tokamak Energy, we're working with Tokamak machines, like JET, but we're bringing in new high-temperature superconductor technology to improve machine performance. I believe that startups are the key to developing commercial fusion power. And that's because I believe that it is funding, or lack of, and fear that is holding us back. Let me explain. I do a bit of climbing, and I'm interested in how science improves performance and safety on the mountain. You're probably familiar with Mount Everest first summited in 1953 by Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay as part of a British expedition. Now, I became fascinated with Everest when I realized that the, the main reason the British got to the top in the 1950s, but they didn't in the 1920s and 30s, was because of the scientific understanding and the technology available to them, not because they were better or stronger than the people before. In the run-up to the 1953 expedition, the Alpine Club and the Royal Geographical Society, who were overseeing the Everest expeditions, hired a physiologist, Griffith Pugh, to work on the problem of oxygen. They realized that using oxygen to improve human performance at high altitude would be the key to their success. Pugh did experiments to determine the optimum amount of oxygen to breathe, and he also worked on nutrition and dehydration to keep the climbers performing well. Engineers worked on the oxygen equipment, reducing weight and increasing comfort. Work was also done on clothing, equipment and radio sets, and they all contributed to the eventual success of the expedition. In the 1950s and 60s, when climbing Everest was a matter of national prestige, the teams that were successful were the ones that put the money in to get the science and the equipment right and to pay for logistical support by way of cooks and Sherpa teams. Nowadays, individuals can climb Everest. So you could say that anyone can climb Everest if they just train and prepare. But Everest costs a lot of money because you still need to pay for the team and the support and the equipment. So Success on Everest is restricted to those who can pay or raise the money. The same goes for fusion. The ones who succeed, whether that's countries or companies, will be the ones who pay for it, who build up their team and their technology and have the support to get there. And what about fear? Surely no one is scared of fusion. <laughs> well, People are scared of taking risks. Perhaps people or governments are afraid of investing in fusion because they think it's still too far away. Perhaps, perhaps they think it's impossible and they haven't considered that it happens in the sun, so it must be possible. We just have to figure out how. Perhaps potential investors are afraid of failure. Perhaps scientists are afraid of failure and are willing to try new things. There are many ways that fear can limit us. But fear, like risk, must be managed. 
On Everest, one of the scariest things that climbers have to do is cross huge crevasses by walking over ladders laying across them. Managing the fear requires focus. Climbers break the task down, one step at a time. They don't focus on the chasm beneath their feet. They focus on the rungs of the ladder, placing their spiky, cramponed feet carefully on the rungs, holding core muscles tight for balance. They focus on the little steps that get them nearer to their destination. And the same goes for fusion. We need to, to break the task down into manageable chunks so it's not so overwhelming. At Tokamak Energy, we have five steps to fusion. One, demonstrate initial capabilities. We built a test Tokamak. Two, demonstrate the necessary technology. We built a Tokamak with all magnets made of high temperature superconductors back in 2015. Three, verify the theoretical basis for future designs. We're currently operating our ST40 Tokamak and developing magnet technology alongside. This year, we hit a huge milestone of achieving 15 million degree temperatures in our tokamak. Four, demonstrate net energy gain. We're aiming to do this by 2025. And five, develop a power plant module with a target of 2030. And within these broad milestones, there are many subtasks, actions, and decisions that day by day get us closer to our goal. We have seen in the past what ambition, dedication and funding can do. We've seen visionary teams breaking the challenge down to succeed. Steps that take us to orbit, to the moon and will one day take us to Mars. We know it works and I'm confident that with more funding and less fear, Fusion will usher in a new sustainable energy future. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.